All right. Hello, online class. I hope that you're all doing well. Uh, I'm just going to go over very briefly the syllabus so you guys uh, hear it from me, what's going on this semester. Um, first of all, we don't have any sort of in-person meeting, uh, so there is no weekly schedule, and you are really kind of on your own in terms of keeping up with the course materials and completing assignments on time and things like that. Um, this is English 1101, which is composition and rhetoric. My name is Brian Murphy. That's Brian with a Y. <clears throat> uh, I do have a physical office at West Georgia Tech. It is on the Coweta campus in room B228. Um, since I doubt many of you will want to drive to the Coweta campus to meet me in my office, I have listed my office availability as being uh, virtual appointments online. Now, you are certainly welcome to come by my office if that's convenient for you. Maybe you live in the Noonan area or something like that, in which case my office hours this semester are Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, well, sorry, Tuesday from 8 to 1145 and Thursday from 8 to 10 a.m. Um, other than that, appointments by collaborate session are probably your best bet if you want to speak to me in person. Or, of course, you can use my primary mode of communication, which is my email address. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say there's a little message in Blackboard that I've put, I've pinned to the top of the lessons folder, but I'll go ahead and say it in this video. I communicate via email. I do not use Blackboard messaging system. Um, you may see this as an inconvenience, but it really isn't because it actually helps you to log into your Outlook email often for several reasons. One, you won't miss any um, emails from the school regarding like fee deadlines or something like that. And you also will see every announcement that I send out in Blackboard. Not only does it go to the Blackboard homepage for our course, but I can check a little box and it will automatically send an email to all of my students, which uh, indicates that the announcement uh, it has been sent and it will go straight to your phone if you have notifications set up for your email. So you should uh, log into your school email through Microsoft Outlook. That's Outlook 365. The login is uh, for everything really is universal. So the same login that you use for Banner, for Blackboard is the same for the email, is the same for logging on to any on-campus computers and that kind of thing. Um, so please use my your email and my email address to communicate with me because if you start sending me messages through the Blackboard messaging system, you may have a bad time. Also, try not to send your fellow students any messages and stuff. If you have questions about the course, it's best to address me directly. Sometimes it takes me a little time to respond to emails, and this is just because I get such a huge volume of messages. Um, I am full-time at West Georgia Tech, which means I teach six classes. Um, that is quite a few students. So uh, if, it, if you are antsy about getting a response, try to be as patient with me as you can, because I usually uh, am pretty good at getting those turned around. Um, I do have an office phone. You can try to call me on the phone if that helps. Uh, the phone number is listed here, 770-755-7815. Um, and this is English 1101, so we're going to be looking at issues in the humanities and society. We're going to be doing research. We're going to be reading articles. We're going to be formatting MLA stuff and writing essays and all sorts of that fun stuff. Um, now, the good news is, is that uh, we don't have a textbook. Well, we do. Let me restate that. We do have a textbook, but we are not requiring you to purchase a physical textbook we're not requiring you to buy one of those ridiculous little key codes where you have to log in and and uh, punch in your key code and, and all that stuff. And it's two hundred dollars. We don't do that. Um, there is a textbook. It's a PDF. It's called. Um, oh, gosh, I'm spacing on what it's called. Um, college composition, something or other. It's at the top of the lessons uh, folder in Blackboard. Uh, and then I also have the isolated chapters. Uh, for the quizzes and stuff that we're going to go over, they're in the quizzes folder. So those are from the textbook, but they're right there in the quizzes folder. So you can read the chapter and then take the corresponding quiz. Makes it super easy. Um, stuff that you will need, you may want to get a flash drive. Um, some people prefer a Google Drive and that kind of thing. 
and that's fine. You can use that if you want to, but you're going to need some some way to save uh, material. <clears throat> um, if you don't have Microsoft Office, you can see this little hyperlink here at the top of the second page of the syllabus. That will take you to a place where you can get free Office provided by the school. Uh, and that's a great resource because I think if you try to buy it, it's actually fairly expensive. So uh, getting that for free during the time that you're enrolled is, is a really good, uh, a good thing. Um, you need Microsoft Word and that will be provided in the free office if you if you download it. Um, but I recommend that you write all of your essays in Microsoft Word as opposed to like Google Docs or some other word processor, because sometimes during the process of converting the file, because you will have to convert it to a Word file in order to submit it, um, sometimes things get messed up, things get moved around. So it's really best for you to just uh, go ahead and get Word and just write the essays in Word, and that'll just make it way easier for you. Obviously, since this is an online class, you will need internet access from home. Hopefully, your internet is fairly strong. If it's not, or if you know that there may be issues with you having a computer or something like that, you might want to make secondary arrangements, particularly around the time that things are due. Uh, because you're going to be submitting assignments online, so you need to have strong internet. Uh, I recommend very strongly that you use either Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome because they are the least buggy uh, in terms of web browsers and Blackboard. Blackboard is a fickle mistress, my friends. It is a problematic uh, program. It's actually quite sophisticated. But there are lots of glitches, lots of bugs. And on top of that, it's just confusing, especially for people that have never navigated it before. So uh, getting Mo Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome, it'll just make it easier on you in the long run because there'll be fewer of those glitches and things uh, with, those, with those browsers. Now, these are my instructor-specific policies. So there is a, a syllabus quiz that you're going to have to take. Uh, and most of what's on the quiz, some of it is about my contact information and that kind of thing, but most of what's on the quiz is right here from these instructor specific policies. Um, I am going to go over them with you now. I do encourage you to read them yourself and read and pay very, uh, close attention to the wording, um, because these policies represent a binding contract between myself and the student. If you ask me a question that relates to the syllabus policy, it's possible that I will respond, please see the syllabus instructor excuse me, instructor specific policies. Um, so these are firm. I don't change these policies for anybody. They are what they are, and uh, you know, that's just the way it is. So the first one is about plagiarism and academic dishonesty. So I really dislike cheating. Uh, I think not only does it um, undermine the integrity of our institution, but collectively it downgrades our society and our civilization, because if we have a bunch of people who are, um, you know, supposedly intellectual representatives of some discipline or other that have cheated their way through college and through graduate school and through God knows what else, uh, then it, it's like, you know, the whole process of education and uh, the whole integrity of our society. This may be a little hyperbolic, but it really does affect um, the quality of our overall life. Um, you think about like if you had a doctor who cheated their way through med school and then they're trying to do some kind of surgery on you or something. I mean, that would be an extreme example of why this is a problem, but you can see that it applies to the rest of life as well. So uh, for plagiarism and academic dishonesty, zero tolerance. If you get caught cheating on anything, um, if I suspect that you cheated on anything and I catch you in the act of it, uh, you get a zero on the assignment, non-negotiable. This really applies to essays. Uh, if you cheat on the essays and every semester, many students plagiarize essays. I, last semester, I think between all of my classes, I had seven instances of plagiarism, which means seven students failed the course, essentially, because they refused to just do the work and, and maintain their integrity and that sort of thing. So the essays, there are three of them, they're worth 20% each. If you plagiarize the essay, you get a zero, goose egg, no questions asked. Now, if I accuse you of plagiarism, 
it means that I have the receipts. Okay. It means that I have the proof dead to rights. I know you're guilty. If I accuse you and you come back by saying, I didn't plagiarize, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to send it to the Dean of Student Affairs uh, for a, a, what's called a, um, a, what is it called? I am spacing out. Code of conduct violation. Uh, I'll say, hey, I'm pursuing code of conduct. Can you verify that this is a plagiarized essay? Uh, I guarantee you they will agree with me because, again, if I accuse you, it's because I already know you did it. But in the event that I could be wrong, I need that second pair of eyes to make sure that I'm right. And also, if you're going to double down and lie when you've plagiarized, then you do need a code of conduct violation because you need to get reined in. You need to be checked in that way. So please, please, I beg you, do not cheat on your essays. Do not plagiarize your essays. If you do, uh, you're going to have a hard time. I'm going to have a hard time. It's the least, it's my least favorite part of the job to have to deal with students who cheat because uh, it's just very uncomfortable. Okay. So moving on. The next thing is preferred communications. Please use the black, I'm sorry, please use the school email over Blackboard messaging. Do not use Blackboard messaging. Again, do not use blackboard messaging please use my email to contact me you should log in from your school email and send an email to me via my school email which is brian.murphy at westcatech.edu um, there are lots of reasons for this one blackboard is not very compatible compatible with um, cellular devices i don't know if you've noticed cell phones and the like um, and so having it go to my email i get a direct notification i know that you've emailed me and that makes it way way easier also i don't want to keep up with six with a bunch of different inboxes and stuff it's just a mess okay so please use email contact me i will get back to you as soon as i possibly can um the turn it in dropbox policy so we i do use turn it in um instead of safe assign i have the option of using either but i choose turn it in because turn it in has a much better similarity report so the similarity report is a mechanism that uh, scans your essay against the entire internet, as well as every essay that's ever been submitted to turn it in and generates a score, which shows me how much of your essay is, matches other sources. Um, now, in certain circumstances, you're going to get a similarity and it's no big deal, right? So if you're using sources, like if you're quoting an article and you have a citation and stuff, then it's no problem because you told me where it comes from. Quoting and citing um sources is not plagiarism and it will still generate a similarity report but that doesn't mean you plagiarize it just means that it's similar okay so don't freak out when you see that number um but if the number corresponds to something that isn't quoted and cited within the body of the essay not just listed on the work cited page but the actual quote itself has to be quoted and cited um then it that would be a plagiarism violation. So all of the essays have to go through Turnitin. Now, the problem is we don't use Turnitin as an outside source. We have an embedded Dropbox in Blackboard, which means it's super buggy. Yay. Um, so I do get students sometimes it's like it's right before the deadline. It's 1150 at night. You're going to hand in your essay and lo and behold, you're getting an error message. Um, so what you can do in that instance is you can attach the essay in an email and send it to me, in which case I will waive the late penalty as long as you get the essay in the actual Dropbox within 24 hours. Um, if you don't get the essay within the Dropbox, if you just email it to me, I'm not going to grade it and eventually a zero will be put in the gradebook. I have lots of students that email me the essay. Hey, it didn't work here. I'm just going to email it to you and they expect me to grade it from email. I'm not going to do that because I've had students try to create problems like make up technical issues so that they can avoid the similarity report and get caught plagiarizing in that way. Um, so it's got to go through the Dropbox. Now, most of the time we can resolve the issue very easily within a day or so. If you go up to campus, whatever campus is nearest to you and you try to use one of the computers in the library and stuff, I've never had anybody have a problem try to submit it. Also make sure the file type is correct. Everything's supposed to be a Word file uh, and that sort of thing. And you should not have a problem with it. But if you do send me that email, it will get rid of the late penalty. Now, if you send me the essay in the email and then you submit the essay, I'm going to compare the essay that you sent me in the email to the one that is 
submitted. And if it has changed at all, then I will apply the late penalty because obviously you kept your essay longer so you could work on it more. Um, but if it's the same document, I will pretend that it's not late and that's how we get around those issues which inevitably arise. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, moving on to the next page. So there are two columns for your for your writing assignments because of the glitches. Okay, there's a glitch in the it, so when I link the Turnitin Dropbox to the gradebook um, and I put the grade in the Turnitin Dropbox, sometimes it just magically disappears and I have no idea why. And I've asked people why and they don't know either. So I have two Dropboxes and I let you see both of them. The Turnitin Dropbox will show and you'll say, oh, okay, I handed in my essay because there's the little icon that shows that I submitted it. But that doesn't go into the grade book. When I have graded the essay, I will manually enter your essay grade into a second column, the manual column, and that column will be factored into the grade book. So please don't be confused about the two different columns and that sort of thing. Um, it's covered here in the syllabus, so that should explain it fairly well. Uh, if you send me an essay in advance, like two weeks in advance, I can kind of give you general feedback on that, but I can't go through and mark every every correction and stuff like that. Some students tend to believe that they can come by and get me to just correct everything they've written. I cannot do that. So um, because that's excessive collaboration and is technically academic dishonesty, even if it's your professor that's doing it. Now, what I can do is give you general feedback. I can say, hey, I noticed that your thesis statement needs work, your formatting is off, you have a lot of comma splices and that kind of thing. And then you can take that feedback and apply it to your essay. But you have to send it to me uh, well in advance of the deadline, because if it's close to the deadline, I'm probably not going to get to it. I'm a very, very busy guy, and the closer it gets to essay time, the more busy I get. So you should be aware that you got to have, um, you got to send it to me well in advance, and you shouldn't expect me to go through and correct everything. Okay. Um, <clears throat> computer use yours during lectures doesn't really apply to you. Um, I do have a lot of different resources, some of, uh, some of which are lectures, lecture videos. You'll be watching the lecture videos. Most of the lecture videos, not all of them, but most of them were recorded in the past. So um, I have a, a, a different computer now that's a lot better. So I probably should redo all of the videos, but um, the audio may not be as good as it could be, but I think it's bearable. So uh, that's probably easy to navigate. Um, there are issues with Chromebooks. If you rely on a Chromebook computer, you might want to consider um, having a backup plan, like a different computer or going to school to, to submit stuff, because sometimes Chromebooks have problems, and sometimes a student will use a Chromebook for the entire semester and have no problem at all. Um, but it has been a problem so much in the past that uh, the dean asked me to include a clause in my syllabus that deals with Chromebooks, so there it is. If you have a Chromebook, you may want to consider something else. The next clause is the content advisory. Now, the content advisory is very important because some of the stuff that we read over the semester, the short readings and things that I've assigned, uh, are a little disturbing, graphic, or maybe even offensive. Um, so I welcome you to voice your opinion. Like if you want to send me an email and say, God, that was a horrible thing. I hated it. Or wow, what a risque, awful text. Why did you assign it? I welcome that kind of feedback. But you should be advised that I'm not going to dismiss any content on the basis of moral or personal objection. OK, so if you're like, this is totally offensive to me and I don't want to read it tough. I don't know how else to say it. Um, uh, forgive me if I sound crass, but it, it is just the way it is. Right. If you're going through college, you're going to encounter things that, that don't always appeal to you. And plus, given that I have hundreds of students. Um, I can't please everybody. It's not possible. Everybody's got different views, different attitudes. What bothers you may not bother somebody else. It's impossible to find material that's palatable to everyone. So what is assigned is assigned. If you feel that I'm being unreasonable or you feel that you don't want to encounter anything that bothers you on that level, then you are perfectly um, within your right, especially now that it is drop ad, you're perfectly within your right to take a different class or to withdraw from this class and uh, take it later with someone else or whatever. Okay. 
Um, disruptive behavior really doesn't apply. Just please be nice when you email me and realize that if you email me in a nice way, I'm much more likely to respond in a nice way. Not that I'm punitive um, with students like that, but you know, just maintaining a, a, a respectful tone is always going to work out in your favor, right? It's always what you want to do. Uh, even if, and I do make mistakes sometimes. It does happen. Uh, I make mistakes. I'll sometimes the date will be off on something or something like that. So just send me an email. Be respectful. Be kind, and I will do the same. Um, this plans for online online shift doesn't really. Uh, and also, I think you guys are perfectly set up in Blackboard. The only thing is, I may change something as it go along goes along. Um, but if I do change something, I'll change it on the syllabus as well. So if you're wondering like what's due, the syllabus is like your Bible in that in that regard. Look at the syllabus, see what the syllabus dates say, and go by that if you're confused. Okay. I think I have cleaned up your Blackboard because um, I stayed up to like three in the morning the other day doing that. So, uh, but I could have missed something. So in the event that I do, just go by the syllabus. If it's not on the syllabus, don't worry about it. Uh, attendance, obviously, um, for you guys, you're not going to attend physically, but you should log in every week. Um, if you miss an assignment, uh, you're going to have to have an excuse in order to make it up with the exception of essays. And that brings me to the late work policy. So quizzes, discussions, and other assignments, um, those can only be made up if you have a credible excuse for why you were unable to complete that assignment in a timely manner. Um, so what is a credible excuse? Well, uh, you were sick, your kid is sick, um, your car caught on fire on the freeway, uh, and you, you send me a picture of your Volvo in flames, uh, or you know stuff like that. Um, the things that don't qualify as excuses work, okay? Car trouble generally, like my car wouldn't start. How many times have I heard that one? I guarantee you at least at least 70% of the my car wouldn't start excuses are just people who rolled out of bed and didn't want to come to class. So they made up an excuse so they wouldn't be penalized. Um, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Sometimes I've seen everything at this point as a professor, every kind of excuse imaginable, and many of them are uh, not really true. So with that being said, uh, if you communicate with me in advance, like, hey, I'm going to have to be out of town for this funeral. Can you please let me turn this in late? Or if something happens and you send me an email and say, hey, here's my doctor's note, my, or here's my kid's doctor's note. He was running a fever of 103 or something like that. Obviously, I'm not going to penalize you for that kind of thing. So I'm pretty reasonable about that. But I do need some kind of um, documentation that you actually could not complete the assignment. If you don't have a credible excuse, and you ask me if you can redo an assignment, the answer is no. And in fact, in most cases, I'm not even going to answer your email. And that's not to be rude, but it's like it's right here in the syllabus. If you miss an assignment, sorry. OK, I'm not trying to be mean, but college has a different level of expectation. you got to hand stuff in on time. you got to keep up with your deadlines. It's part of being a mature, responsible adult. So um, don't even bother emailing me if you don't have an excuse or a reason and you can't prove it. Don't bother emailing me and asking me if you can redo, if you can turn in such and such quiz or test or whatever late the discussions, um, because the answer is no. Uh, I do reserve the right to give pop quizzes or to create new assignments. Uh, I will email you and let you know about that when that happens, but I do reserve that right. Um, so please be aware of that. Uh, late to class doesn't apply to you. Again, you should probably lo log in every week, right? Um, here's the other thing. AI writing software. I don't even want to tell you about this, but I have to because I know it's out there and I know students are going to be tempted to use it. Uh, and eventually, in a couple of years, everyone will know about this. And so it doesn't really matter if I tell you or not. But AI writing software. So I know a lot of you have probably seen like the AI images that people are making now on the social media and stuff. You just type in a couple of words and it generates a, like a photo uh, for you and stuff and artists everywhere are freaking out about it. But now they've made an AI for writing assignments and you just type into the AI and tell them what the writing assignment is and it generates a response. Now I have talked to several of my colleagues about this who have already dealt with this problem and they say that the software isn't really polished enough yet to be totally convincing and that if you're astute and you pay attention, you can tell that it was written by a computer. But I have heard also that sometimes it is a little hard to tell and it is conceivable it is conceivable that I could get an AI generated response that tricks or fools me, although I am a pretty smart guy and I'm really good at catching this kind of thing. 
Here's the rule, though. If there is an issue with AI uh, and I catch it, if I catch a student that had used an AI-generated response, or even if I just suspect it, like I don't even have to have the receipts. If I get a suspicion that students are using AI, I am going to um, probably what I'll do for this class is I'll just hook up the Respondus browser to uh, all of the essay assignments. And you'll just have to type everything with a webcam watching you and making sure that you don't click off or look at anything or do anything like that. Um, I may be able to have you come to campus and write it. I have to talk to my superiors about that. Um, but, you know, like sometimes with online classes, you'll have to show up in person to take the midterm or the final. Um, if I feel like people are just using AI to cheat, I will do I will do that in a heartbeat. So please don't force my hand on that because it's going to create a lot more work for everybody. Just do the assignment. Do the assignment. We don't need a bunch of people to cheat their way through college because civilization will collapse. OK, and I'm not being hyperbolic. It's true. Um, so just be aware of that. Don't use the AI. If I catch you using the AI, even if it's one person in the class, there's going to be huge repercussions for everybody. And I don't want to go there and you don't want to go there. So let's not do it. Um, the Respondus browser. So at least one assignment will be proctored using the Respondus lockdown browser, which is basically, it prevents you from cheating basically. Um, they only require that we use it for one assignment, although I'm pretty sure we can use it for multiple assignments if we really want to. Uh, but I will send out information in advance about which assignment that is. Right now, I'm thinking it's going to be one of the quizzes near the end of the semester over the novel we're going to read, which is 1984 by George Orwell. So please keep an eye out for the Respondus stuff. I will email you and say, hey, it's time for you to download the Respondus browser and do all this stuff to set it up. And it's it's kind of a pain, but um, it's actually required by law that we do at least one assignment with uh, online proctoring. So um, you won't have to come in in person, and that's good, but you'll have to do it online. Um, and it will watch you, and if you like look around too much or if you click off and try to Google something or whatever, uh, it'll catch you doing that. Okay, moving right along. Uh, this is a bunch of legalese and stuff. Um, SLO, we have an SLO assignment. It's a grammar test. Um, so yeah, there's that. This is uh, you can read over this if you if you want to. It's just it's kind of a bunch of mumbo jumbo to be honest. Um, I mean it's important, but I'm not going to bore you with it right now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and this just this talks about the kinds of errors there are. Now, the basic skills diagnostic assessment. So this is the assignment that is due this weekend. It's due Sunday. You have to do it by Sunday. Uh, it takes an hour. I think there are, I don't know how many questions there are. I think it's like 50 or something like that. So it's a fair amount of questions. Um, if you don't make, if you get a 69 or lower, if you don't get a 70, right? If you don't get a C, you have to do the basic mastery, basic skills mastery assignments. And the due dates for those are listed in the syllabus. Um, and you have to do them when they're due. Uh, and um, you can actually make up the 5%. The, the, so the basic skills diagnostic will go into the 5%. And then if you take the rest of the assignments, it'll make up the difference in the points that are left. Uh, you can uh, also, if you make a 75 and you want to do the basic skills master, you can, but you can't wait till the end of the semester and go and do them retroactively. You have to do them as they're due. Okay. Um, so that's just, it's a little thing, you know, it's not really a lot of points. Um, but it is something that we have to make sure that students are up to, up to snuff in terms of, uh, in terms of grammar and stuff like that. Okay. This is how the, um, this is how the grading is done. So you'll notice the first category, writing assignments, 60% of the final grade is writing assignments. There are three of them. They are 20% each. So think about it. If you plagiarize a writing assignment, you might as well drop the class, seriously. Because if you started in 80, like you got to get everything perfect. It's not going to happen. Um, so that's 60%. There are three essays. They're in MLA format. They're um, a thousand words, uh, three pages roughly each, although the last one is a little bit longer. Um, and they are 20% each. So please take your writing assignments seriously. The next one is learning activities. 
That's going to be um, short quizzes like the plagiarism quiz, the syllabus quiz, and then the reading quizzes. And also, the we only do four, excuse me, four discussions, uh, discussion boards. Most online classes do more discussion boards. I really don't think discussion more boards really do that much for you. Um, so I don't assign that many of them, but they're in there with the learning activities. Then there's the test and pre-writing. So that's the grammar test and the, and the rhetorical strategies tests that you'll take um, throughout the semester. For the grammar test, you only get one attempt because it's the SLO, but you get, in my class, you get two attempts for the rhetorical strategies tests. Um, so you'll just read the chapter that corresponds to the test and then take the test. You get two attempts and it keeps the highest. My colleagues only give you one attempt, uh, but I'm Mr. Nice Guy. So uh, I, the tests are very, they're pretty tough. Um, and the wording can sometimes be confusing. So I'd say take your time, read the question, make sure you understand what it's asking you before you answer the question. And also make sure you read the chapter and watch my corresponding video for each of the um, rhetorical strategies before you take the test. Uh, so that's test and pre-writing. The pre-writing, I am assigning outlines this semester. There are three outlines. This is the first time I've assigned outlines, so assigned outlines, so they're a little bit... Uh, rough around the edges, but I think you'll be able to understand um, what I'm looking for. And if not, you can just send me an email and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, and then the basic skills, this includes both the diagnostic and the uh, mastery uh, are 5%. Now it says no category for the diagnostic assessment, but I put it in manually. It's very confusing. Just that's 5%. Okay. If you have questions about that um, specifically, you can send me an email. Uh, okay. You need to get a C uh, to get out of here. You can get a D, but if you don't get a C, you can't go on to the next thing. And I think you will probably have to take it again if you do get a D. So it won't be like a zero for your GPA, but uh, you'll still have to take the class over. So you want to aim for that C, folks. Aim for the C. Um, also, if you're in like nursing or some other competitive selection, uh, they require a lot of uh, kind of more rigorous um, grading. You got to get a 75 for nursing. All right, here's the course schedule. All right, this is everything that we're going to be doing over the course of the semester. This is set in stone, folks. So um, please check this every week. Every week, you should log in, check your syllabus. Make sure you know what's going on. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Email me. So the first thing, you're going to read the syllabus. Hopefully, you've already done that. I'm explaining the syllabus. That's the next thing, the lecture video, intro to course and syllabus, which I, you're watching right now. So that's good. Um, I want you to watch also the lecture video over plagiarism and academic dishonesty. You can also read the slides, the lecture slides. They're in the supplemental materials folder for plagiarism and academic dishonesty. And also the lecture video on the intro to rhetorical strategies and the writing process. The rhetorical strategy slides are also in the supplementals folder supplemental materials folder. Um, so pretty much anything like notes, slideshows, that kind of thing is in the supplemental materials folder under the lessons tab, lessons folder on Blackboard. I know it's confusing. You'll figure it out. You'll navigate it. Um, this Sunday, the only assignment that's due this week is the basic skills diagnostic assessment. It takes an hour. Um, you've got to make a 70 or higher. Don't ask me if you get a 69. Do I really have to? Yes, you really do. Uh, and so you got to make that. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. Um, and it'll probably help you in the long run. Um, next week, we got lecture videos, intro to essay one and rubric, basics of MLA formatting, uh, and then parts of an essay. Um, I did make a few minor changes to the essay prompts that may not be covered in the videos, but make sure you, so make sure you read the essay prompt. Uh, it'll pretty much be the same. The only one that I know is is different is SA2. I require three sources now instead of two. That's the only difference. And I, I will try to redo those videos before that time comes. But in the event that I don't, just be aware, whatever the assignment prompt says is what is due. So uh, in that case, it would be three sources. But watch these videos, Intro to SA1 and Rubric, Basics of MLA4. MLA is a drag, and uh, I don't like it, but hey, we got to do it. It's very important. It's 20% of each essay. So you really want to make sure you do it. Watch the letter, lecture video over the parts of an essay. And then for week three, you're going to want to read. It says read for next week. So I let you know when there's a reading for the next week. 
um, that's important, uh, and that's going to be Plato's Allegory of the Cave, which is a wonderful text that everyone should read when they're starting out on the uh, journey to higher learning uh and enlightenment it's very important it was written a long time ago in ancient greece but it's still relevant today and i hope that when you watch my video you'll understand why um then next sunday on the 22nd we got the syllabus quiz and the plagiarism quiz they're very simple and cut and dry uh they're not many questions though so you're going to make sure you want to study that stuff before you take those quizzes all right moving right along now also look over here on the right it tells you what basic skills are due um so that's like a separate category you don't have to do the basic skills mastery if you get above a 70 i will reiterate that but if you get below a 70 then you got to do this other stuff in this other column so next week it's number one the sense the simple sentence and it tells you everything you need to do um then week three you're going to watch the lecture video on the process strategy basic skills two is also there if you have to do that uh in addition to the process strategy you're going to be watching the lecture video on compare and contrast and uh, I will I will post this video. I have not made it yet, but I'm going to post a video explaining the outline and the outline template. Uh, I will upload the outline as soon as possible. It is it is complete, but I have to proofread it. Uh, and then I will upload a video explaining the outline and what I expect from the outline. Um, so please watch that video on week three. Uh, then we have for that weekend you're going to want to read chapter three four on the process strategy as well as chapter three six on the compare and compare contrast strategy and then that sunday we got three things due okay uh so there's a lot of homework on that week sorry but um the 29th is the quiz over the allegory of the cave and i don't ask you anything interpretive in these reading quizzes i just ask you like who was the speaker what was going on that kind of stuff so you don't need to know like all the answers to what it really means you just need to know what happens uh, and then i have the chapter three four rhetorical strategies test which is process and then the three six rhetorical strategies test which is compare and contrast week four you're going to want to watch the lecture video on classification and division and cause and effect as well as the lecture video on my thoughts on the allegory of the cave, please watch that video because I really do think it's important. Um, and then for homework, you're gonna read 3.3, classification division, 3.7, um, cause and effect. You're gonna read for the next week, Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. And then that weekend, you've got those two quizzes that correspond to those chapters that are due. So that is, I'll zoom in on this for you. That is the, um, 3-3 test, the 3-7 test, and then also the first discussion, which is practicing the rhetorical strategies. Uh, so you can go and look at that discussion. One thing I will say about discussions, um, well, a couple of things I'll say. The first thing is that um, the discussions, you should log in early and do your initial response, and then you should log in again and do your student responses. So you, you are required to do an initial post, which is your response, and then you reply to two students. Now, if you do what I ask you to do in the discussions, then I treat the discussion like a completion grade, okay? The initial response is 70 points. The two student replies are 15 points each. Um, so if you don't reply to any students, you, you get a 70. Now, if you don't do what I asked you to do, I will deduct points and I'll explain why I deducted it. But there is no rubric right now for the discussions. So just do what I ask in, in the question. Um, don't phone it in, as they say. Take it seriously. And I, if you do what, I'm, what you're supposed to do in the discussion and you reply to two people with meaningful commentary, I slap 100s on discussions all day long. OK, I do read them, but I usually grade for completion unless you don't actually do the assignment. Um, also, your comments to other students should not be, hey, man, great post. I really liked how you used words to communicate. Um, and, but, you know, I'm being obviously tongue in cheek, but I do get replies like that all the time. Great post, Brandon. Like, ugh, come on. Give them some meaningful feedback, especially since for the first discussion, they're going to be practicing strategies. So like give some feedback like, hey, man, you didn't really use the transitions. You should look at the book and get the transitions that you need. Or, hey, man, uh, I don't know about your topic sentence. It's a little unclear. That kind of stuff. That's the commentary that I'm really looking for. Um, week five, I want you to watch the supplemental video in the supplemental uh, materials folder on uh, Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. That actually might be, uh, yeah, that's in the materials folder. It's either in the materials or the readings folder, one or the other. 
Um, then I want you to watch the thoughts on the lottery video in my lectures. Watch my lecture on the overview on grammar. I haven't posted that one yet, but it will be posted by the time you're, you need to do that. Um, and then for homework, you're going to read Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. Uh, why do I have – I have just – I realize I screwed that up. Okay, so you're going to want to have read – uh, okay, so I forgot to tell you, sorry, that is an error. I will fix that. The lecture video, um, sorry, the re read for the homework, the lottery, you should read, there should be a warning on the previous week. Um, so it's right in terms of when it's due, but I should have let you know that you needed to read it in advance. Not that it's important, but read the lottery for the end of week five and watch that video and stuff and take the little quiz on the lottery, then take the grammar quiz. You only get one attempt for the, the grammar quiz because it is the SLO. Um, so that just is the way it is. I have to send data on that to my superiors. So, uh, I can't really give you two attempts cause it'll screw up the data, but every other, um, thing in the assessments, the tests, the major tests, you can, you get two attempts. Um, and then on the 12th of February, the SA one outline is due. Um, so that's also going to go through its own turn it in Dropbox. It's a separate turn in Dropbox just for the outline. Those have all been created and the dates are listed therein. Okay, moving right along. We're almost done, folks. Sorry for the um, wordiness. So week six. All right, here's what I'm. I'm gonna try this with you guys. Um, I've only. I'm not the most experienced online professor. I'm got a couple of notches in my belt now, and I'm. I'm learning uh, to to be better than I have been in the past. So week six. I'm not gonna really assign any kind of extra stuff for you that week. Um, or make you watch any videos. What I'm going to do on week six is if you want to speak to me about your essay, I will be open on week six. Uh, you shoot me an email or I'll send out an announcement letting you know my availability and you can set up a um, video chat with me. There are like 50 students in this class, so we may have to have like a couple of students per time slot in the same collaborate session. Um, but I doubt uh, most of you will probably go, Oh, I don't want to do that. And you won't do it. So it, it probably won't be a problem, but I'm perfectly willing to, to read over your outline, to read over your essay, to give you feedback one-on-one -on -one in collaborate. And I will leave that week wide open for you to make appointments with me. Um, if you don't do that, that's on you. Uh, you don't have to, but I'm making them optional right now, but I really recommend that you do. And most students that seek individual help with me, uh, improve their essay grade by at least a letter. Uh, so if you were going to get a C and you come and see me a lot of times, you'll get a B instead of a C. It's not a promise, but generally speaking, it is true. Essay one right now, the due date is February the 19th, um, by midnight, 11.59 PM. Um, so please submit it through the turn it in Dropbox and the writing assignments folder. And then we move on to the second unit. Now the second unit is a little more difficult. I call the first unit, the training wheels unit. You're just picking a strategy, one of four strategies and you're writing an essay with that strategy. Um, but the second unit is, is where we actually start to get into the college level work that now you're going to do research you're going to put forth arguments. You're going to learn how to persuade people, all of that stuff that you would have to do in a four year college. That's what we're going to look at for unit two. So first thing, watch the lecture video intro to persuasion, argumentation, and exemplification. There's a separate lecture video on the persuasion strategy, and there's one that explains essay two. Watch those as well. Read for that weekend's homework, the 3-8 chapter on persuasion, and then take the chapter test. I think the persuasion test is a lot shorter. One of the tests is a lot shorter than the other ones. It's one in the second unit. Um, and then read for the next week, Martin Luther King's letter from Birmingham jail. Um, watch the lecture video on the crap credibility test on week eight, uh, watch the using Galileo video, and then read for that week's homework, um, both the chapter three, nine exemplification and letter from Birmingham jail. We got a quiz over a uh, letter from Birmingham jail due that weekend, as well as the three, nine test on exemplification. Then for the next week, you're going to read Jonathan Swift's A Modest Proposal. Now, A Modest Proposal is really the reason that the content advisory is in the personal syllabus policy, because it is one of the most uh, shocking things that I ever assign in any of my classes. Students in my seated classes come in after reading that, and they wonder why I have a job, and they wonder why I would ever assign such a thing. I promise you that it will make sense once we're done, but I will ask you this. 
please don't Google what it means. Please don't look up what it really means. Let yourself be surprised by it and then watch my video and watch the content because uh, it's, it really is the shock and the, and the whole reaction is part of the fun, right? And remember, I don't, in the quizzes, I don't ever ask you to interpret anything. So, um, you know, make sure you don't Google that because it's, it's way more fun if you, uh, if you just react. Uh, so the next week we got poultry for POTUS video, which I'm going to upload. Um, that's an essay that I wrote. It's a sample persuasive essay about why my rooster should be president of the United States. Um, so that is a joke, right? But I wrote it to show you how to formulate an argumentative essay, and I just kind of made it funny to make it more interesting, right? I'm not, I don't really want you to be funny in your essays, but it's just kind of, you know, something lighthearted and, and satirical for you to enjoy. Um, watch the essay, the lecture video, which I will upload explaining the essay to outline template, then watch the lecture video on explaining uh, some thoughts on Birmingham jail. Um, letter from Birmingham Jail, the MLK piece, which is one of the most persuasive pieces of short writing that I am aware of. He uses all of the persuasive tactics masterfully from appeal to ethics, appeal to authority, appeal to emotion, tonal shift, know your audience. I mean, the whole thing. So when we study that piece, we're not really studying it in terms studying it in terms of the history of civil rights, which, you know, we all made it through high school history. We should we should know that stuff by now. We read it from the perspective of how is this a persuasive document? What sort of strategies is he using to persuade his audience and how do those uh, strategies work? OK, then we got 310 argumentation and modest proposal for that weekend. We got a quiz uh, test over argumentation and a quiz over modest proposal. Uh, as well as the second discussion on March the 12th, which is the crap credibility test. Um, so you will know what that is by the time that comes around because you will have already watched the video. Then for week 10, watch the supplemental video on a modest proposal in the supplemental materials folder, watch the lecture video on modest proposal, and then watch the lecture video, which I'll upload on logical fallacies. Uh, and then that Sunday, 319, the SA2 outline is due. Uh, the next week, I do have one video for you to watch, and that is the intro to Orwell in 1984. So for, so for the third unit, we're going to be reading George Orwell's novel 1984, which I think is the most relevant novel I can possibly assign you today. Um, it is a dystopian novel that was written in the late 40s by a British author named George Orwell. That's not his real name. That's a pen name. His real name is Eric Blair, but that's not really important. Uh, and he was trying to predict the future and what the future would look at, like based on the trends that he was seeing at the time. And remember, he lived through World War I and II, so they were some pretty disturbing trends. And he tried to predict what the future would look like. And he describes a civilization that uses technology to surveil its citizens. It's totalitarian. It controls thought. It, it's heavily propagandized. Um, and when 1984 actually rolled around, people were like, oh, silly Orwell. You know, he was so paranoid and scared. Um, but today in our modern time, Orwell is really important because you guys live in the age of the Internet when you're being watched all the time by foreign governments, by your own government, by other people, by companies and corporations. And there's algorithmic manipulation of everything you see and your media diets are all controlled. And how do you even know what is true in this world? I ask you. Uh, <laughs> So we're going to go over that. Sorry, not to depress you. Um, and then we'll have another collaborate session opportunity if you want to optional before the essay is due on the 26th. Now, um, you're going to have to this. You're going to have to read, uh, even though the essay is due on the 26th, that next week, you're going to have to have book one of 1984 read. So please make sure you do that. Um, then the lecture video, 1984 book one. Lecture video on intro to essay three. There's a quiz over book one of 1984. And then read for after break 1984 book two. Also, please keep up with the basic skill stuff. I haven't been mentioning that, but that's constantly spread throughout. And it's in the second column here. Uh, and then there will be spring break. Uh, well, you'll all be off having fun on some beach somewhere. No, most of my students are like, I just worked the whole break. Uh, try to have fun. Try to do something for yourself, right? I know it's not ideal, but, uh, you know, it's it's there to give you a little break before crunch time. Um, then we come back. We watch lecture video on book two. Watch the video on the outline. Do Sunday is the quiz over uh, book two of 1984. And then that Sunday also um, you're going to do discussion three, which is to create your own dystopian world. Uh, and I you don't need to know what that means right now. I will explain it in the videos. 
Uh, and then you're going to read for the next week, 1984, book three. Uh, watch my lecture video on book three, take the final quiz, and then essay, the uh, three outline is going to be due on the 23rd of April at 11.59 p.m. Uh, and then we got one more week of collaborate sessions, uh, and that's a much shorter week, so it's like maybe two days of collaborate sessions. Um, so we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And then that Wednesday, the 26th, and this notice that SA3 is due on a Wednesday. This is because uh, it kicks you out of Blackboard, I think, on that Friday. Uh, I don't know why really they do that, but they lock the students out of Blackboard. I think it's so you don't send your professors a panicked email every time a new grade is entered. Because, um, you know, I know how the students are. You, you don't you don't really care about your grades until right at the end. And then you're like hanging on the edge of your seat. And every little thing that I put in the computer, you're sending me an email wondering if you're going to pass. And I think just to just to save us the hassle and the headache of having to respond to those emails, they just kick you out and you just have to wait and see what you get. So um, SA3 is due on the 26th. And then there's one more discussion that Thursday, which is uh, an open evaluation, basically asking you how you like the course, what I could do better, that kind of thing. Um, try to be civil. You know, if you really want to roast me, there's they'll send out an evaluation in your email and that will get read by my superior. So it actually has consequence. Um, but try to be civil. I welcome constructive feedback, though. If you're like, oh, I think we need more discussions or or I, I don't really like this text or whatever. Uh, that's fine if you want to do that. But anyway, that's it. Every assignment that's listed there, that's all that's due. That's all you got to do. Please don't cheat. If I catch you cheating on anything, and it's harder when you're online, but it's not impossible. Um, and other than that, I hope we have a really great semester. Again, the videos are that are in there right now, most of them, well, all of the ones that are in there now were recorded in advance. But in this video, I'm speaking to you, specifically your class. So I wish you luck. Um, I do... Online classes are tough because a lot of the time, um, you know, you're just a name in a computer. I'm just a name. Um, so I try to make these videos and stuff, and I try to include a little bit more um, valuable content just to give you more of an experience and to, to make it a little more personable. And I try to make my course as entertaining as I possibly can, given the circumstances. Um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But please just know that I'm trying. Uh, I do love what I do, and I and I love my students, so uh, I'm here to help you. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'll let you, uh, you know, do assignments three weeks late and that kind of thing, but it does mean that I am generally uh, on your team, and I will try to help you understand or help you grow as an intellectual. I want you to go on to become successful people in the world and to uh, to be the movers and shakers of tomorrow, as they say. Uh, and so please let me know if you need anything. I'm here for you. And other than that, have a wonderful semester and I look forward to teaching you. See you later.